thing I'm working on now is uh, trying to correct an inaccuracy in the small ER20 collet chuck that I've made. And that fits together nice and snugly, as you can see. So it should be accurate. But at the moment isn't. This has been driving me nuts trying to get it accurate. And I'm still quite a long way off. I know that the outside of this is perfect. Um, and I know that the threads are straight. So any inaccuracies. And, and I've got super accurate collets now. So I know that's not the problem. I paid a lot of money for them. Um, and I suppose the most likely culprit is going to be the nut, I think. Um, I'm going to first of all regrind the inside to make it as, that as accurate as I can. It's hopeless. It's miles out. So that's my next job is to try and get that accurate. I use a Tolbert blue layout to mark the inside of the cone. It is dissolvable with methylated spirits and gives a brilliant blue colour. You could use alternatively a Sharpie pen. The interior of the cone had been previously machined with a boring bar and I used a air operated die grinder which was bought cheaply off eBay with the stones that came with it to do the grinding. The stones are quite fragile so only the very smallest cuts have to be taken to clean up the blue and it takes several passes to remove it all. I use some paper towel to protect the bed of the lathe during the grinding operation. In this clip you can see the very small amount of metal that has been removed during the first pass of the grinder. This is the interior of the cone after completing the first grinding operation and all the blue has now been removed. The collet and a ground rod can be inserted to check the fit of the collet and whether it waggles at the back or the front of the recess. A check can now be made using Micrometer Engineers Blue. This is coated very thinly on the outside of the collet and is then inserted into the cone. Rotating it slightly leaves a film of blue on the high spots and shows where more metal needs to be removed, in this case at the back. The process is repeated several times until uh, it is an even colour from front to back. A check can then be made with the dial gauge to see how concentric it is. In this case, concentricity reduced to 0.06 of a millimetre. Light polishing of the inside with emery cloth wrapped on a dowel then um, produces a fine clean finish. Further improvement in concentricity is then down to 0.05 of a millimetre.
excuse the handheld shakiness but I've uh, just got a little bit further on with this um, 0.03 so that's actually now starting to get somewhere near and it's all in the taper the middle taper the inner taper rather so it's not perfect but we're getting I've now managed to get the inside cone inside here to exactly the right shape uh, the right taper and it's smooth and uh, it is straight like the taper on the outside of here just to recap that's done by firstly turning inside with a turning tool um, to the correct taper having been set up first on uh, the outside with a dial indicator against here so that the tools the top slide is set at an angle that's exactly the same as this that's fairly straightforward to do <coughs> having done that uh, boring out is not quite so straightforward because there's always a spring in the tool especially over the depth and the fairly small diameter inside here and that gets worse when it comes to doing the grinding because they're very small stones on sticks um, right now having got this I can prove where I am if I push this in here just by hand it stays there and there's absolutely no um, movement on the dial indicator if I move this or try to move this bar uh, the, the rod rather so that is in there firmly and if I turn it round it's very very close to being within 0.05 of a millimeter yes it is within 0.05 of a millimeter so that is showing me that that is accurately in if the taper at the back was incorrect when you waggle this to and fro the dial would jump about so that's a, f a very good indicator that you've got maybe at the back the taper has got a gap in it or at the front there's a gap in it and then you have to figure out by using the uh, engineer's blue whether it's at the front or the back that the uh, gap is and it's quite easy to tell okay having got that far I can now screw take this out again and you can see that that was held in quite well there if I put my nut in that I've been using so I've got that the nut in there put my test gauge bar the ground bar a little ground rod in making sure it's in there correctly just nip that up Now, this should show, hopefully, that it's reasonably close, but it won't be as good as without... That's 0.02. So there is a, a difference between... with the locking nut on and without the locking nut on. So that indicates that the locking nut has got an error in it, because it's pushing the end of the collet at a slight angle. I, I have tried regrinding inside of the uh, taper in here and I think what I will do is have another go at it in a minute. I've got two nuts and I'll just check the other nut as well. If you've got the uh, fit correct on these tapers, you can undo the start of the thread and then it sticks again. And then it has to break the second seal where it's been seated properly. So when I first did this, I was getting a reading um, of about uh, 0.1 of a millimetre off. I'm now down to 0.02, so that's a huge improvement. 
My um, special collet nut has arrived this morning. It doesn't look very different from an ordinary one except it's a polished machine surface here and there's a lip in there. If you look carefully on the side there's a, a, some means of fixing something in there. Um, apart from that's just a nicely machined nut and has the usual um, <coughs> way of holding, retaining the collets uh, in, in the normal way, but it has a ball bearing in it somewhere, um, which I haven't finally discovered how that works yet. Um, but it is amazing, it's made such a difference to the accuracy. Um, I can just zoom in on this now. And this is zoomed in, and you, I'm turning the I just can't see the needle move at all. Um, absolutely solid on it, I think. Just move this a bit more because you probably doubt that I'm turning the spindle. Let's just move this up a bit and then you can be sure that I am. And also, I'll just move the dial indicator so you can see. It is doing something. So there's absolutely no movement in that needle at all. It's well within 0.005 of a millimetre. So that is as accurate as I could possibly have wished for. Yep, that's it. Uh, the nut came from Maritool in the United States um, and they advertise us making very accurate um, and ancillary tools for CNC etc um, and it's www.maritool m-a-r-i-t-o-o-l dot com I've not heard of them before I did the inquiry on the internet and um, I'm very pleased I did because that's certainly been my problem up till now the nut's not been accurate enough it does sound amazing but that's really all it was my own home machine parts were fine um, so I now am happy.